In the video today, I am trimming a very beautiful Tennessee Walker broodmare who is getting close to her foaling date. And we got a little bit off schedule with this mare due to weather. And she gets really good nutrition and she grows really beautiful hooves. And she lives in a very wet environment. So when we don't trim her um, as often as we normally do, she just gets long. And thankfully her hooves don't really distort at all. She just gets a lot of growth. And because she's in a wet environment, it's really not abrasive enough for her to wear down her hooves on her own. So the main structure that I'm taking off right now, and I actually had to do a few passes with my nippers, was her toe. Um, she got quite long toes this cycle. So just took a few, few passes there, uh, did a horizontal nip and a vertical nip. And you'll see even after uh, I start rasping, you know, rasp the heels through the quarters and the toe, and the toe is still probably gonna look long. But I wanted to kind of wrap some balance in first before I decided to do another vertical nip in the toe area just so I could see how thick the wall was there. And it was quite thick. So we probably brought her breakover back, I don't know, at least half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, which is a big deal because for every extra centimeter of length a horse has in the toe, it adds an extra 110 pounds of pressure to the back of the foot. So bringing back a long toe really helps them move a lot better and limits any damage that might occur in the back of the foot where those tendons kind of roll over the navicular bone in that area. So now further balancing her heels. This foot has a little bit of a twist in it, so I've taken a bit more time balancing to the soft tissue in the heels. But now I'm just creating my bevel and smoothing any of the rough edges before I pull this foot forward. So now that I have it forward on the stand, I'm going to address the flaring the most that is occurring through this horse's quarters. Her foot in this environment just likes to go splat. <laughs> And that's very common in a wet environment. The, the growth won't grow down, it grows out. So on all four hooves during this trim, I'm really trying to remove any flaring and straighten up where the hoof wall is going to contact the ground. And then putting a heavy bevel on those areas so that it prevents her hoof wall from chipping and cracking in the future. You can see the side she hits hardest on is the lateral side. And when she got long, she just, start, she just started to develop a small crack in that toe area, which thankfully was not very deep at all. So I didn't do much to it other than put a strong bevel in that area of the hoof wall. Now I'm working on the left front of this horse. You can see it looks quite similar to the right front. On her front hoof, she just grew a massive amount of toe. And her frogs were actually in really good shape. They were just somewhat overgrown. And actually, you can see right there that I uncovered a little pocket of thrush, which thankfully was very shallow. So I didn't really investigate much deeper into that area. But if I'd left it, it could have become an area that had quite a deep fungal infection in the hoof. But because we exposed it to air, most likely it's not going to continue to create further damage in the frog. So after addressing the frog, I'm kind of addressing my heels and rasping through the toe, or not rasping, I'm nipping. I'm nipping through the toe, which is definitely quite long and I'll probably have to take a second pass at that after I've rasped a little bit because it will expose uh, some increased toe length after rasping. Yeah. And, you know, in this environment, it's wet, and the hoof wall does not grow straight down like it would in a more desert-like environment. It, it grows out. So we have to be mindful not to remove too much height, but still remove excess material at the same time. So now I'm just kind of balancing this foot. This foot is quite straight. Um, it does not have a twist in it like the other front did. So... 
the soft tissue in the back of the hoof is already balanced. So I'm mostly just removing excess material. There's that second nipper pass because she just has so much toe. Oh, little mischief maker stole my mud towel. All right, back to the hoof. After rasping, I kind of created some elevated edges on the bars, so I wanted to make sure I took those down so they aren't the first place that bears weight back in the heel. Further balancing, smoothing my wall, creating my bevel, which I will definitely finish more from the top. Kind of also smoothing out any, any nipper marks that are still there, especially through the heel area and creating that uniform wall thickness all the way around that hoof capsule. Well, that's looking pretty good. Just another high point that needed to be removed in those bars on both sides. I just want them to passively weight bear. And then I think that's about finished. Just that high spot on that medial heel. And we'll finish the rest from the top. So now I've brought this hoof forward and it's quite a beautiful hoof. So I'm really just gonna focus on creating a, a bevel, a pretty good heavy bevel. She hits evenly on both sides of this hoof wall. So I'm not really trimming to try to change anything, just trying to collect up the hoof and make that wall smooth so she doesn't crack or get any chips, especially since there's a chance that I might not work on her hooves for a little while. So it's looking pretty nice, beautiful hoof. Now I'm moving on to the hind hooves. And this horse has beautiful hind hooves. Just gonna make sure I scrape off all the dirt and dust and manure and mud before I get started. She has these big beautiful frogs on her back hooves, but they're a little bit overgrown and I can't take the wall down unless I take some of the height of that frog down. So I'm gonna do that first and take a bit of the frog off, not too much, just down to healthy tissue. And then she has those little bumps on the back of her frog and they're fine right now, but if it dries out before I see her next, they're gonna make it uncomfortable for her to load her heels first. So I wanted to make sure I remove them during this trim. So now just nipping off the excess material on the wall. And she, on her hind hooves, she grew about the same amount of height all the way around and it didn't run forward as much. And the only reason that doesn't happen as much on the hinds is because most horses predominantly carry two thirds of their weight on their front end. So their front hooves tend to get more distortion in the hinds. Usually the hinds look much more normal and are much more straightforward and grow much more evenly. And I don't have to rebalance them as much. So yeah, pretty beautiful hut. Not too much asymmetry. A lot of horses, uh, especially brood mares, that gain and lose weight, significant amounts of weight, will grow high on the inside of their hoof wall, their hinds, and will flare a bit on the lateral side. So you can see that a little bit in her hoof wear pattern. And that's, that's super normal. I'm gonna collect that lateral side a bit more from the top where it's flaring out. Um, so now just making sure that wall is a bit more equidistant, you know, has the same width all the way around the hoof capsule but I will also take more of that from the top. And I'll take more of that lateral flare from the top. But you can see the hoof is starting to look more symmetrical because I've taken some of that material off. Just rasping that bevel into the toe. I think I'm gonna pull it forward now. So I've got that left hind forward on the stand now, and the first place I'm addressing is that lateral flare that you can see from the bottom. And other than addressing that flare, I'm just going to create 
my strong bevel all the way around the hoof wall and just make it smooth. Make sure there's no sharp edges and that there's a nice roll to that wall and then I'll, I'll set the foot down and move on to the next hoof. Now I'm cleaning out this horse's right hind. And actually, you'll get to see her do this a couple times in this part of the video. So broodmares are constantly fighting gravity. And just like, I think, for women, uh, gravity is not kind when you're pregnant. And it's really easy to start to get lower back pain. Okay? So for the horses, it's the same. It's probably even worse because they fight gravity even more because they you know, walk on four legs. So, so every time this horse pulls its foot away, it's only because its lower back is starting to become uncomfortable. Because when I pull the hoof back behind her body like this, it actually puts an arch in her lower spine. And if that's already an area that's uncomfortable, me having her hoof held in this position is going to make it that much more uncomfortable. So it's really quite a privilege that she lets me do this at this stage in her gestation. And every once in a while, she starts to wiggle or pull her hoof away and tell me, you know what, I'm uncomfortable. Can you please work faster? But she's not trying to be malicious. She's not trying to kick me or anything like that. And this hoof looks very similar to the left hind hoof. Uh, same wear pattern, which is awesome. If they had different wear patterns, I would be concerned that she has some sort of lameness or discomfort somewhere. But they look pretty much exactly the same. So that's always nice. Big, beautiful frog, big, thick, well-connected hoof wall, just overgrown structures. That's it. So I'm just removing that excess growth and trying to bring her hooves back into balance. And same thing, she's flaring about a bit in the lateral side. So when I finish turning this hoof from the bottom, I'll bring it forward and I'll address that flare from the top. But you can already see that her hoof is looking much more collected looks a lot more even, evenly shaped, like, like a spade almost. So I'm just rounding off those edges, making them smooth. And that time she just got tired. She said, aren't you done yet? But sorry, no, not quite yet. Just a little bit more to do. I'm gonna brush all the dirt off before I start using my knife, just cause it makes them dull. I'm going to take a few more bits of frog off there around the central sulcus to make sure there's not much of a fungal infection in there. She's, she's, she's done. <laughs> she's mentally done with me, um, but so close to being finished. Just a few more swipes with my knife, opening up that central sulcus. And then I think, yeah, the last thing I'm doing is I'm just going to take down those bars a little bit. They already look pretty good. Just wanted to take off a little bit of the excess material, make sure there's no points, and we're good to go. So after I gave that mare a few minutes to rest, I pulled that last hind hoof forward and let her just chill and relax with it on the stand for a few seconds before I got started. But this hind hoof, like the other hind, uh, is just beautiful and nicely collected so my main focus was just finishing my bevel which really doesn't take very long and you can see she's much more comfortable having this hoof pulled forward lovely mare with lovely hooves can't wait to see her full